There's a special kind of thrill that comes with finally getting something that's been in your shopping cart or on your wish list for a while. And that feeling is even better if you know you got the best deal for it. That's why the savviest shoppers shop with Rakuten. They get the brands they love with the most savings and cash back. And you can get it too. The idea is simple. Stores pay Rakuten for connecting them with shoppers, and Rakuten shares the money with you as cash back. Start getting cash back at your favorite stores like Sephora, Ugg, Levi's, and many more. Plus, Rakuten lets you stack sales on top of cash back, so you're not missing out on any other deals or rewards you might already be a part of. It's easy to use, and you get your cash back through PayPal or check. Download the free Rakuten app and never miss a deal. Or go to Rakuten.com to start getting the most bang for your buck. That's R-A-K-U-T-E-N. Hi, my name is Adam Gitwitz. I'm an author. I'm also a storyteller. I like telling all kinds of stories, but I especially like telling grim fairy tales. You may think you know grim fairy tales, and you may think that they are sweet and boring. But listen, those tales you heard were the cute, happy, little kid bedtime versions of the grim tales. The original grim fairy tales aren't like that at all. They're weird, and sometimes gross, and often scary. In other words, they're grim. And I'm about to walk into a classroom and tell one of the original grim, grim tales to a bunch of kids. Do you want to join me? Do you want to hear a grim fairy tale? Let me help you decide. On a scale of grim, grimmer, and grimmest, the story I'm going to tell today is grimmest. It is gross, it can be sad, there is some death, and the bad guy is as evil as bad guys can possibly get. If I get to a part of the story and you start to feel scared or uncomfortable, this is what you could do. You could turn down the volume and count to five, then turn the volume back up. If it still seems like a part you don't want to hear, just turn the volume down and count to five again. You know how much weird and gross and scary you're ready for. You know what you need. Okay, I'm at the classroom door now. There are kids inside waiting to hear a grim fairy tale. So, are you coming in? Grim, Grimmer, Grimmest. This story I specifically chose for you guys um, because it's just like weird in a way I think you guys will like. Okay. Bearskin. Once upon a time, there was a brave soldier. He was always at the front lines, leading the charge, and all his fellow soldiers respected him. But one day, the war ended, and the soldier realized that he had no idea what to do. He'd been a soldier since he was a boy. It was all that he knew. And while the people of this kingdom loved its soldiers during wartime, they preferred to pretend they didn't exist when the war ended. Why might that be, do you think? Why, why does that happen? Look, people, pe- people prefer not to think of armies as a bunch of individual people. They mm. think of them as an army. Mm. Yeah, my cousin is in the army. Is and, uh, he? And he's been gone like a while. A long time, interesting. Yeah. So the soldier had no family, no work, and most people tried to pretend he didn't exist. After wandering this way for a year, he found himself in a forest, his rifle over his shoulder, with absolutely no clue where to go or what to do. He paused to rest by an old tree. Just then, a man with slick hair, a long green coat, and cloven hooves instead of feet came out of the forest. The man with the green coat spoke to the soldier. He said, You look sad. Home from war? No money? No job? No family? And the soldier said, That's right. Well, I've got a job for a brave soldier like you. You are brave, aren't you? And the soldier said, Try me. The man with the green coat smiled. Oh, I am. That's creepy. Look over your shoulder. The soldier spun around, just in time to see an enormous bear barreling toward him, snarling and foaming at the mouth. 
The bear was nearly on top of him, but the soldier calmly raised his musket and shot the bear between the eyes. The giant bear crashed to the ground. The soldier turned to the man with the green coat. Brave enough for you. The man with the green coat smiled again. So, you've got courage. I love his accent. Are you brave enough to do this, then? For the next seven years, you will be without a home. You must not wash, and you must neither shave nor cut your hair. You must not care for your appearance in any way. You will wear the skin of that bear as your cloak, and never during the seven years may you take it off. In exchange for all this, I will give you as much money as you want for the rest of your life. What? Yes? The money isn't any use if you can't... Like, talk to anybody. <laughs> totally. The soldier looked at the man in the green coat, from his slick hair to his cloven hooves. And then the soldier said, I know who you are. Who do you think he is? The devil. Good for you, said the devil in his green coat. One last condition. If you die before the seven years are up, your soul is mine. Never do that. Don't trust the devil. Never trust the devil. This sounds like in The Little Mermaid, when Ursula is like, if the prince doesn't kiss you, your soul will be mine. Very similar story. And do you know what Hans Christian Andersen, who wrote The Little Mermaid, loved Grimm's fairy tales? The soldier said, You won't get my soul. And the devil replied, I usually get what I want. The soldier hesitated. He thought of his poverty and his lonely life. He thought of all the money he could ever want. He thought of eternal torment at the hands of the devil. He thought of not washing himself for seven years. No. Would you do it? Would you take the deal? No. no. You think it's worth the risk? Yeah, I would. It's worth the risk. You think it's not worth the risk? No. Who would risk losing their soul just to get money? At last, the soldier said, I'll do it. Are you kidding me? The devil skinned the bear and lay the stinking hide over the soldier's head and shoulders. He told the soldier, Reach into the bear's mouth and you shall always have money. And then he added, See you in seven years. Or sooner. <laughs> and then he disappeared. That's dark. The soldier set out. The first year wasn't so bad. He had all the money he wanted, and while he was dirty and smelly, money goes a long way in making life easier. But by the second year, the soldier's fingernails had begun to look like claws. His hair and beard were so matted they had become like felt. And the stench of the rotting bearskin was sickening. Inns and taverns began to refuse to serve him. People would scream and run when they saw him on the road. He had all the money he could ask for, but fewer and fewer people would let him get close enough to use it. The soldier traveled, giving money to the poor when they let him get near them, sleeping in barns when someone would accept his money, and sleeping under his bearskin and the sky most nights. Pretty soon, he started to wish that he were dead. Okay, now what would you do if you were in the soldier position? You have the money you want, and you can't even use it. I'd go into the forest and eat with some berries. Ah, uh, interesting. One day, the soldier came to an inn, where the innkeeper was kind enough to take a huge amount of money for a tiny room in the back. The soldier curled up in the bed and cursed his life. Just then, he heard the sound of a man sobbing. He listened for a while. Then he decided to follow the sound. He went into the hallway and listened again. The sound was coming from the room next door. The soldier pushed the door open to find an elderly man weeping and sobbing. When the elderly man looked up and saw the soldier, he screamed and tried to escape out the window. But the soldier spoke to him, and his voice was kind and human. It's okay, I won't hurt you. And the elderly man calmed down. The soldier asked why the elderly man was crying, and the elderly man explained that he had once been a successful merchant, but all his money was lost, and his wife and three daughters would surely starve. The soldier said to the elderly man, If the problem is money, you can stop crying right now. I've got all the money you could ever need. He reached into the bear's mouth and pulled out enough money to live on for a year and handed it to the elderly man. The man wept and kissed the soldier's filthy feet. You are so kind and so generous. He looked up. Are you married? And the soldier replied, 
What do you think? <laughs> no. Right. Oh, then please, please come home with me. I have three beautiful daughters. I'm sure they will jump at the chance to marry you. Do you think they will jump at the chance to marry the bearskin? No. no. Well, the soldier thought the old man was crazy. First of all, who would want to marry a complete stranger? And second of all, who would want to marry a complete stranger who looked and smelled like a rotting bearskin? But it was the first time anyone had invited him to their home in years. So he went. When they arrived at the house, the elderly man went in first to tell his daughters to prepare themselves. Oh, God. He warned them that the soldier looked a little, well, weird and smelled just a little bit, but that he had saved their family from ruin and was kind and generous and rich. When the soldier was brought into the house, the three girls were waiting for him. The eldest daughter screamed and then started throwing up on the floor, right in front of the soldier. The middle daughter said, Father, I don't care how kind he is. That's the most revolting creature I've ever seen. I don't know what's uglier, the rotting bearskin on his back or his face. Are you saying that to his face? Yes. Ugh. The eldest daughter threw up again. <laughs> but the youngest daughter spoke directly to the soldier. You were very kind to have saved us. If your heart is as good as your deeds, I will be your wife. Though your appearance is strange and your odor is... Well, shall we say, remarkable? <laughs> Had the soldier's face not been covered in fur and grime, they all would have seen the soldier light up with joy and gratitude. Well, the eldest daughter wouldn't have seen it because she was still crouched over her puddle of vomit. She started throwing up again. The soldier said, This is the first time I've felt hopeful in many, many years. He took off a ring that he wore and broke it in half. I must wander for three more years. If I don't return after that time, I am dead and you will be free. But pray for me, and God willing, I will return. And he gave her half of his ring. As a podcast network, our first priority has always been audio and the stories we're able to share with you. But we also sell merch, and organizing that was made both possible and easy with Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell and grow at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. They have an all-in-one e-commerce platform and in-person POS system. So wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. With the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. Shopify has allowed us to share something tangible with the podcast community we've built here, selling our beanies, sweatshirts, and mugs to fans of our shows without taking up too much time from all the other work we do to bring you even more great content. And it's not just us. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Shopify is also the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash realm, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash R-E-A-L-M now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash realm. For three years, the youngest daughter did not know if the soldier was alive or dead, but she prayed for him every day. When her sister saw her praying, they laughed. <laughs> The middle daughter said, You're praying he'll get lost in a forest and never find his way back here, right? That's what I would pray for. And the eldest daughter just made puking sounds. Would you all like to make a puking sound right now? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That was disgusting. Please never do that again. <laughs> when it had been three years to the day, the youngest daughter went outside to wait for the soldier. He did not come. She waited for a long time. He did not come. The youngest daughter went back into the house, put on black, and began to mourn for the death of the soldier. For while he had been the most revolting creature she had ever seen, he had indeed seemed kind. Her two big sisters laughed with relief. The middle daughter said, I was worried I'd have to live with that disgusting thing in the house. And I don't mean the bear skin. 
The eldest daughter laughed too, and then she threw up on the floor. She had a problem. The soldier, yeah, she had a serious vomiting problem. She needs to see a doctor. The soldier was not dead, though. Rather, he was making his way back to the forest where he had met the devil. When he arrived, the devil was waiting for him, wearing the same green coat. When he saw the devil, the soldier smiled. You said you always get what you want, and yet here I am, seven years later, alive and well. And the devil grumbled. Well, I usually do. The soldier looked positively monstrous after seven years. His felt-like mat of hair was down to his knees. His nails practically reached the ground. His beard was full of putrid food, and the bear skin was a rotted, decomposing mess. The devil sighed and said, <sighs> "I guess your soul is yours." And the devil turned to go, but the soldier said, "Not so fast." The deal was, if I looked like this for seven years, you'd give me as much money as I want, and I'd be free to go and live the rest of my life. Well, I did it. So clean me up and give me a shave. No one else will. So the devil took off the bearskin and shaved and washed the soldier, till the soldier was spick and span. Then the devil gave him a fine coat and fine clothes. The devil looked very glum. He said, "You will always find gold in your pockets." And then the devil disappeared. The soldier had never felt so fine in his whole life. He hurried back to the house of the elderly man and his three daughters. When he walked in, no one recognized him. But he was so handsome, he was invited to sit on the couch. And the two eldest daughters fussed over him, flirting and batting their eyelashes and flattering him. But the youngest daughter sat in a corner, dressed in black, her eyes downcast, tears streaming down her cheeks. At last. The soldier said, "You know, I'd like to marry one of you, but I can't decide which. I need a moment alone to think." Well, the two eldest daughters hurried off to their rooms, hoping he would choose one of them as his bride. But the youngest sat where she was, unmoving. The soldier said to the youngest daughter, "Wouldn't you like to marry me, like your sisters?" She shook her head and replied, "I was betrothed to a good and kind man, but now he is dead." And I'm in mourning. What does betrothed mean? She was betrothed to a good and kind man. Engaged. That's right. The soldier stood up and brought her a cup of water. He said, "Drink this, and maybe you will feel better." No, thank you," said the youngest daughter, refusing to even look up. The soldier said, "Please have a sip of this water." I will not," said the youngest daughter. "Marry one of my sisters. I don't want anyone but my betrothed. He looked weird and smelled worse." He was generous, and he had the kindest eyes. And the soldier said, "Will you just take the water?" Well, the youngest daughter had had enough of being bossed around by a total stranger. She was annoyed, so annoyed that she decided to look this stranger in the eye and tell him to scram. She clenched her jaw and lifted her eyes. It was then that she saw, in the bottom of the water glass. What do you think she saw? Half a ring. Half a ring. And she looked up into the soldier's eyes and recognized her betrothed at once. She leapt from her seat and jumped into his arms. When the two eldest daughters came back into the room, they saw the soldier and their youngest sister embracing. They were furious, and then the soldier explained that he was the man in the bearskin. The middle daughter said, "What?" The eldest daughter puked right there on the stairs. And then they both ran out of the house and threw themselves down the well, where they drowned. Why do you do that? What the heck? That evening, there was a knock on the door. The soldier opened it to find the devil standing there, grinning at him. Jeez. The soldier said, "What now? I have my wife, my fortune, and my home. Leave me alone." I just wanted to let you know," said the devil. In exchange for your one soul, I got two. He gestured at the well. Then he winked. Like I said, I usually get what I want. The end. Now, question: Do you think that the devil had planned it that way the whole time, or he just ended up getting what he wanted? I'm not、and、sure.、It. You think he planned it? Like the whole plan was to get those two girls? Yeah. yeah. Well, why don't you know? You wrote it. He just ended up getting. Well, so I am retelling these stories, but I didn't invent them. I retell them. So I add details. I change details. 
But that's how the real one ends. And the devil says, I got two. And, and I don't know whether he planned it that way. Oh, I don't think he did. I think he just always gets what he wants. Uh, somehow or other. That's but interesting. He's the devil. He is the devil. Yeah. He's the evil man. He should. What he does with those two sisters? Yeah. yeah, that, um, yeah. He should puke on them. <laughs> <laughs> Grim, Grimmer, Grimmest is a Pinna original production. Created, written, and narrated by me, Adam Gidwitz, author of A Tale Dark and Grim. Produced and edited by Ilana Milner. Casting and voice direction by Paula Gammon Wilson. Sound design and mixing by Beat Street NYC. Location recording by Jason Gambrell and Evan Viola. Characters voiced by Allison Lee Rosenfeld, Billy Bob Thompson, Sanofia Mitchell, David Wills, George Lambert, H.D. Quinn, Kaylin Lee Clinton, Kylie Claxton, Lori Himes, Mark Thompson, Marka Bartolo, and Tom Weiland. Special thanks to the staff and students at Brooklyn Friends School and Manhattan Country School. You guys are awesome. 